Hello, everyone. My name is Robin Dolezal. Today is Wednesday, March 16th. With me, as always, is Dan Nintel and Alex Pars. Together, we are with Ironwood Financial. Hello, gentlemen. How are you? Hi there. Doing very well. Let's start with this, Dan. Oh, hey, happy St. What, Uro Day? Happy St. Urho is uh, yeah. up in central Minnesota. What, what is Central Minnesota, Minnesota there, uh, where I grew up, there was a town, they were called the Finlayson Finns, the Fighting Finns, and uh, they would celebrate St. Urho's, which is the day before St. Patrick's Day on obviously March 16th, and it was kind of uh, obviously making fun of the Irish, of uh, St. Patrick getting the snakes out of Ireland, this was St. Urho got the grasshoppers out of Finland, and you're supposed to wear purple. Ah, <laughs> so are there no very grasshoppers important in Finland? month, I love it. So, Dano, what would you think of the uh, Pac-12 tournament? Uh, that was pretty exceptional. Fun watch. Uh, if we play like we did the second half against UCLA, we'll win it all. Yeah, I hear we're, 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 we're destined. Well, you know, we we had, have, our, uh, own, our own Emily went to uh, Las Vegas for the tournament. We actually had a couple of friends and clients who went. That must have been a fun time to go to Vegas this year to go watch our cats. That's right. So let's start with the market. Looks like uh, year to date, uh, the S and P looks like down just over nine. I think internationals are roughly the same. Nasdaq is down about fifteen and a half percent. I'm surprised the mids and smalls are obviously down, but they're only down about six or seven percent. What uh, What's your thought? What's going on with the market? Well, obviously, I think we're going to have uh, Alex talk about you know fiscal policy and what the Fed's decisions were. We've been kind of waiting for that information for well, unfortunately, every six weeks we worry about it because that's all that matters right now. And, and as, uh, as Chairman Powell said today, as the uh, horrific atrocities going on in the Ukraine, Wall Street's a little callous about that. They care more about interest rates. And uh, so he announced a 25% increase in the uh, overnight Fed funds rate. And uh, that's points. kind of what we were hoping. Say that again. 25 basis points, not 25%. Oh, okay. Oh, thank you. 25 basis points. Thank you. 25 bips, as they say. And, um, well, for some reason, the market was up about 300 points, and then it fell down to being negative. And if you read all the different articles or listen, I listen to a podcast, they're trying to say that the reason the market had a nice end to the day was because uh, China put in some stop gaps to uh, sure up their economy. They've been in a pretty big recession um, with COVID and supply chain issues, et cetera. And uh, they they kind of did what we've been doing, which is, uh, you know, stimulated the economy with some extra funding and the market had a nice reaction. In fact, the Hong Kong index is up about 9% today since they announced it. But reality is uh, they announced that they're going to raise interest rates. And, and I think Wall Street kind of liked it based on what they were accepting, kind of expecting. And uh, if you look at the NASDAQ, you said it's down about 15 and a half. Well, it was down 22% as of Monday. Mm -hmm. So it's up about six and a half percent yeah. in the last two days. Um, Daniel, I'm happy Daniel, to see. I was just, to, I was just looking up FX. I was just looking up FXI while you were talking. Uh, that's that large cap China ETF, 21 percent here right now today. <laughs> today, <laughs> yeah. What is that? The 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 hundred dragons or something like that that yeah. they call it. But uh, rally is this. Uh, we're going to see this the rest of the year. All right. So we are going to be. The Fed gave us exactly what we expected. As Alex likes to say, Chairman Powell tells you what he's going to say, then he says it, and then he tells you what he said, and he does it the same every single time. He told us exactly what he's going to do. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised to see continued volatility like we've been seeing, maybe a little bit of an uptick, and then, unfortunately, May 1st, they talk again, and uh, we'll probably see the same amount of volatility. Um, right now, you know, the, the NASDAQ was getting to the point where it was priced appropriately, so we saw some money go in there. I mean, it was at such a high PE uh, entering this year. I think it actually hit the, hit the all-time high in November 22nd. And, uh, you know, it was down so far. We saw some people kind of put some money into it. So it makes sense that that would go up. I'm, I'm pleased to see small caps and mid caps do well because we've been uh, a fan of those as, as a firm for a while. So it's helping our portfolios quite a bit. So uh, anyway, nothing really happened. That's the gist of it. The Fed did exactly what they said they were going to do, and the market responded as it has been every time the Fed talks. So uh, you may recall uh, the last thing I'll say is on January 22nd, we were down about where we were on Monday. And you may recall that Chairman Powell talked to the House and said, I'm going to raise interest rates 25 basis points. And the market went up. 
Then unfortunately, uh, the Russia-Ukraine scenario uh, with oil prices, people got pretty upset and, and especially with inflation and this the horrific uh, example going on. Uh, but now with the Fed talked and the market seems to be pretty happy. So uh, the cliche that we've been using for a while and that we'll continue to use is we uh, have to flow with the Fed. Whatever the Fed says is gonna drive the market. So Alex, were you surprised today when, when he said that he was gonna be raising rates the next seven sessions? No, because he already said that. <laughs> <laughs> you know it's funny dan's like uh he tells you what he's gonna say he says it and then he tells you what he already said and then it's always you know you got 20 journalists who ask him the same question <laughs> oh, those, those journalists i mean today watching them i was like boy they don't look like they're high schoolers um, but uh, well, it, all right so is there anything surprising or no he he had more of a, a hawkish tone basically than he has in the past and uh, probably the best news that I saw was there was only one person who said, we want to see a 50 basis point raise this time. Everyone else was comfortable with 25. And that gives me an indication that they're saying, OK, let's take this cautious. Let's take this slow and not go overboard. Uh, he also very much acknowledged that there are issues out there in the world, you know, with with the Russia, Ukraine conflict, with supply chain, with you know, now we can't buy or sell things to Russia and many countries are sanctioning them. So that's going to create more inflationary pressures, which he is aware of. And the impression I got was he didn't really care because he knows about them. Again, it's great that they're smart people. Uh, they're not just, oh, look at this inflation number. That's all we care about. They're looking at what's driving the inflation. And basically my takeaway was those you know, the Russia-Ukraine thing, that's not going to be a big factor in six months. That's a big factor right now. It has been and it probably will be in the March numbers. And we saw oil go to almost $140 a barrel. It's back down to 95. So those higher gas prices that are going to be reflected in the, you know, March inflation numbers, they may not be persistent. And he doesn't necessarily need to react. So again, it's nice to see some of the commentary. It's also very amusing to see all the journalists ask, you know, what are you going to do next time? And him say, we'll find out next time. <laughs> so, but. Alex, I have a question for you. I wasn't able to watch uh, or read the Fed minutes. Did he talk about inflation being transitory at all? Or is he, it seems to me, I read an article where he said it's worse than he thought. What, what was your take on his talk about inflation? I think the words that they used were something along the lines of, yeah, maybe we were a little, uh, bullish if you were to call it uh, transitory. It's definitely not as transitory as we hoped. Maybe we should have reacted sooner. And none of that's a surprise to anybody. I mean, we're seeing big enough inflation numbers that it's upsetting Americans. And nobody wants that. And we've got trouble hiring people, so on and so forth. It's overheated. It needs to be slowed. Interestingly enough, though, you know, what he said was our policy decisions, this one now, and the ones coming in the coming months, those aren't really going to be felt for two to three years. And so what's going to drive down inflation, their expectation is in the mid fours for this year, uh, is going to be the supply chains cleaning up and things just getting back to more normal. So it's not necessarily going to be Fed driven, uh, which again is, is a good thing for the stock market because the stock market doesn't want to see 6% CDs. Right? We want to see interest rates stay low. Out, just non-competitive. Um, but they're creeping back up there. And by the end of the year, it might be attractive to get some you know, slightly longer term bonds. Did he say anything? I know he talked about interest rates. Did he say anything about this balance sheet? He said they're going to let it roll off, uh, but he didn't say when. And people repeatedly asked that question with when, 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 at a future meeting, which it sort of, the tone sort of sounded short, sooner rather than later. But that's just reading into it. It wasn't mm -hmm. explicit. He very clearly said, we haven't decided. We've started talking about it. No. So a uh, question for you. I, I was talking to David and, uh, you know, the, the whole bond market's kind of squirrely right now. And you, you, we talked about it last time. We had that amazing graph that you built for us that uh, showed us when you buy something at a premium and, you know, if slowly you see the principal erosion. Uh, I, was, I was talking to David on Monday and he said that, a Fidelity bond desk called super excited 
because they had a one-year mature treasury. So a one-year treasury, so like a CD, only probably safer, and was paying 1%. And they were like, we can't keep this on the shelves. It's selling hotcakes. So the article I read said the Fed's kind of planning on sometime in the next 12 months of, of increasing the overnight fund, Fed funds rate by 1.75%. What does that mean to that one-year treasury? Does that, what, what, is it, what, what does that do in the short-term bond rates? Historically, that meant a lot. That meant that those rates, the one-year treasury go up to almost three, but now it doesn't mean anything because they've got that $9 trillion balance sheet. And that $9 trillion balance sheet, I'm, I'm not certain of this, but I've read that it's a two and a half year average maturity. So if they decide they're going to maintain that balance sheet. They're not going to let the whole thing roll off in five years, right? Uh, so if they're going to maintain it for a certain amount of time, they are very active participants in the bond market and they're going to be spending hundreds of billions of dollars every month repurchasing matured, matured securities. And they can do whatever the heck they want with interest rates. So if they decide that they want the three-year rate to be three, then they can do it. If they want it to be one and a half, they can do it. And the overnight rates, I, I don't know that it's actually going to be, you know, that big of a difference. So that's oh, uh, the big question: is what do they do with the balance sheet? Gotcha. So, what would uh, do you recall when they started reducing the balance sheet in 2016? How high did a one-year treasury or one-year CD get? Do you remember? It never got attractive. And that was the reason, you know, that they, they raised rates. I don't remember how many times, call it eight times. And uh, and mortgages never got to five again, right? They right. were four and a half. CDs never got attractive. And that was because of that balance sheet. Balance sheet is twice the size it was then. And so far, they have not described their plan for reducing it. So why do we seem to overreact so rapidly when we worry about the Fed raising rates when it's it's a long, I mean, it's five, six years before we start seeing a, any meaningful reduction? It could be shorter this time. It should okay. be shorter this time. Remember 2008 you know, was the start of the crisis. 2010 was when unemployment peaked at around 10%. Now we've got what, 3.8, 3.6 unemployment, 11 million unfilled jobs, this economy is overheated. So there's got to be a much faster reduction of this free money if they want to bring down inflation. And that's going to be tough with shipping disturbances, uh, supply chain shocks, all that stuff. It's, it's going to make it more difficult. So the path is definitely not clear, but it should not be the 10 years or so that we saw last time. Gotcha. I have, I have one last question, then I will quit asking. Um, I bonds. I've been getting a lot of questions about inflation, treasuries. You know, um, I saw an article that uh, was forwarded to us from the New York uh, uh, New York Times saying that had you had an I bond over the last 12 months, it paid 7% or something like that. I know I personally asked you a couple times, could you uh, share with all of us why that isn't the panacea? It seems like it should be in an inflationary number. Well, the first thing is they limit how much you can buy. So you can go out and buy, I want to say something like $40,000 for a couple. Uh, it's not a ton of money. And two, they redo the interest rate every six months or so and say it's going to be whatever inflation is. So the reason we're seeing 7% is because we saw 7% inflation last year. What's it going to be this year? Well, maybe it's four, like the Fed says, and you'll get four. But your real rate of return is going to be zero because the I bonds that they're pricing these days are a real rate of return plus inflation of zero. So there's basically no way to beat inflation on those I bonds. You can keep up with inflation, but if what we're looking at is, you know, this year inflation, or last year inflation's bad, as, as Chairman Powell said, May, June, July was terrible. And once those numbers roll off, it's going to look a lot better. And so now you get your 4% inflation, then you got down to their target of two. Well, now your I bonds paying two and you're stuck with a thing. And meanwhile, maybe we've picked up some corporates paying four and we're actually getting a real rate of return that exceeds the inflation. So that's why, you know, they're not as great as they sound. They're great in the short term, but, you know, can you get rid of them at a reasonable price after you buy them? Not necessarily. 
is there an index that charts with it? Not that I'm aware. So tips, the ETF tips isn't a good Something comparison. Different. Yeah, I bonds are direct purchases, direct resales. They're they're buying from the government kind of thing. Uh, it's actually only ten thousand per person, twenty thousand per couple. Okay. Not yeah. very much. So it's not really relevant. I mean, it's something that sounds good. It's a loss leader almost. You know, if you're trying to hook someone into coming to talk to you, hey, I've got this bond paying seven percent and it's a treasury. Ooh, sounds exciting. Reality is it won't make any difference to your overall portfolio. Mm -hmm. Alex, are you worried about recession if we keep raising rates at this rate? No, again, the Fed's smart. I mean, you can't, it, you're not going from superheated economy to recession in six months. Okay, mm -hmm. The Fed's not an idiot. Uh, you know, Powell talked about that today. He said he basically sees almost no risk of a recession coming up in the near term. And mm -hmm. again, what happens if we start to see recessionary forces? Well, guess what? They stop raising interest rates and maybe go the other way. So they're, they, they call them live meetings. They're going to be fluid. They're going to be reactionary and they're going to be nimble. And so I don't see any major concern there. Yeah. Wonderful. Well, I guess we'll do this again in a month, huh? Yeah. Or if something exciting happens. Yeah. Um, we'll throw the disclosure up there. Yeah. Well, folks, if, if you have any questions about anything we talked about today or anything we did not talk about today, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. You know how to find us, ironwoodfinancial.com or toll-free 888-271-4646. If you're not a client of ours and you'd like to chat with us, you can also reach out to us. Gentlemen, I always appreciate your time, uh, and we'll do this again soon. Enjoy the rest of your day. All right. Take care. Thanks, guys. Happy